In general, there are two different types of routing protocols. One is the interior gateway routing protocol that is used to share the routing information to the routers within the autonomous system. And the other one is exterior gateway protocol that's used to share the routing information to the routers between two different autonomous systems, where EGRP is an IGP, that is interior gateway protocol that used to share the route information within the autonomous system. Then it's a hybrid routing protocol that contains the advantage of both distance vector routing protocol and link state routing protocol. It supports a maximum of 255 hop counts. And it's a classless routing protocol that supports VLSM and summarization concepts. So main advantage of using an EAGRP is it supports load balancing. For example, from a source to destination, there are four possible paths. In general, the data will be flowed in the best path. Out of four, the data will be flowed in the only best path. If we want the data to be shared in all the four paths, it can be done. That's it. Uh, it's in, it, the load balancing can be done in both equal and unequal paths. And it supports to provide a backup route in case of a main route failure. And by default, it uses bandwidth and delay as its common metrics. So the special features used in EIGRP is it makes use of PDM, that's protocol dependent model, that supports to use different network layer protocol. For example, if you see in OSPF, it supports only IP because it supports only IP network layer protocol. But as uh, this PDM makes use of, as here PDM is makes used, it supports different network layer so that IP, IPX and AppleTex are used. <laughs> then efficient neighbor discovery. Here, hello packets are sent in a regular time intervals direct to the directly connected routers to discover the neighbors. So this time interval depends on the interfaces. For example, if a LAN interface, uh, this hello packets will be sent for every five seconds and for in a van interface it's sent for every 60 seconds and then the router is assumed as dead if it doesn't get the replay in three times of its hello packet interval for example if a router is connected in a lan interface and uh, if it doesn't get the replay message for 15 seconds it assumes it's dead next if once the neighborship is formed and the communication between the neighborship, that is, if there isn't any update in the topology, if there is an update in the network, this update will be sent by making use of a multicast address that is 224.0.0.10. And it maintains the list of neighbors who replayed for the multicast it sends out. If it does not get the replay, then resend the same data using an unique cast and it declares dead if it doesn't get the replay even after 16 unicast attempts. Then EAGRP makes use of a dual algorithm. So due to that, uh, it provides the following features that is a backup route determination and it supports VLSM and dynamic route recoveries and sending out of queries for alternate routes if a main route found down. There are three types of tables used in EAGRP. The first one is a neighbor table that's used to maintain the information about all the directly connected neighbors. The second thing is a topology table that maintains all the list of possible paths to all possible remote networks. The third one is a routing table that maintains the list of the best path to possible networks. There are five types of packets used in AAGRP. Hello packet. It's used to discover the neighbors. Then update packet, it used to update the newly learned networks to the neighbor. Query packet, for example, if a current path goes down, then this query packet will be sent to the neighbors to know the next best path to reach the destination. The replay path is the path, sorry, replay packet is a packet sent for the query packet. So acknowledge packet, is a packet that's sent for all the packet. So EAGRP metrics. There are five different metrics that can be used. Bandwidth, delay, load, reliability, and MTU. But by default, 
EGRP consider bandwidth and delay to determine the best path of the remote network. So these are the main EGRP terms that is FT feasible distance, AD successor and feasible successor. Feasible distance is nothing but a possible distance from the source to the destination. And advertised distance is the distance between from the neighbor to the destination. Neighbor in the sense, neighbor of the source to the destination. Successor is the best path from the source to the destination. And feasible successor is the next best path from the source to the destination. So this is the syntax for configuring the EAGRP. First of all, router EAGRP, then to specify the autonomous system, then hit enter. If it, once it's done, then EAGRP is enabled in this router. Then uh, advertise all the directly connected networks as using the keyword network and network ID. Then this is no auto summary. That is by default, EAGRP will do summarization. So in order to prevent that, we are using this command. For example, in this router, if I am using uh, 10.0.0.0 slash 24 as a, as a different network and 10.0.0.0 10 slash 24 as a different network and 10 0 20 dot 0 is a different network slash 24s okay uh, if i specify if i advertise all these networks and with if we didn't specify no auto summary it will do summarization and it will consider as 10 0 0 0 slash 8 so in order to prevent that we have used this command so this is the model router eagrp i have specified 10 as an autonomous system and I have directly uh, i have advertised the directly connected networks and right? no auto summary so these are the commonly used EAGRP commands that is show IP EAGRP neighbors to display all the EAGRP neighbors and show IP EAGRP topology to uh, display the topology table and show IP EAGRP IP root EAGRP to find the best route and show IP root to find the to display the routing table.